Hello, my name is Renee Moran and I'm the tree fruit specialist at the University of Maine. We're here at the uh, Agricultural Experiment Station in Monmouth and we call it the Highmore Farm. Today we're going to have a demonstration on pruning apple trees. It is the dormant season, the best time of the year to do the, mo the majority of pruning for our fruit trees. You want to prune your fruit trees between January and before growth starts in spring. And we're in the month of April right now, which is an ideal time for pruning because a lot of the snow is gone, but growth has not yet started. Before pruning, it's important to know why you're pruning your fruit trees. There are several reasons for pruning fruit trees that are part of a hobby orchard. Today we're going to prune this fruit tree to improve fruit production. But some people have apple trees that are part of a landscape and in that case you would prune fruit trees for aesthetic reasons because of the shape of the tree and because of the flowers of the tree. But uh, this tree will prune for um, improved fruit production and to do that we're going to prune it so that it gets the most amount of sunlight throughout the tree canopy. The tree behind me has already been pruned. When we pruned this tree, the first thing we did was to select which limbs to keep and then to prune the rest of the tree so that each limb gets the most of some amount of sunlight as possible without over pruning the tree. This tree has a typical um, shape for a, a semi-dwarf apple tree. It's a cone-shaped tree where the lower limbs are the longest limbs on the tree and the upper limbs are shorter than the tree and there's only one main trunk or leader to the tree. This type of training uh, gets the most amount of sunlight throughout the entire tree canopy. And you'll notice that the lower limbs don't have other limbs growing right on top of them. Those were pruned out or were not allowed to grow, and uh, the upper limbs have been shortened so that they're not growing down and into the lower limbs. And the tree is pruned back in the top to be a certain height. The height would, would be a, a personal, personal preference, usually based on how tall your ladder is or how high you're willing to uh, reach into the tree. You'll also notice that the limbs have been pruned so that things growing underneath or growing in a downward fashion have been pruned off, and shoots that are growing straight up are no longer in this tree. This vertical or downward growing orientation cuts out a lot of sunlight and these types of branches don't produce the best fruit, so they get pruned out. And then at some point you have to know when to stop pruning to prevent yourself from over pruning the tree. You don't want to prune out any more than one third of the total tree canopy. To make a thinning cut, you would remove the shoot or limb at its base where it joins the previous growth, like this. When you're making a thinning cut, it's best to prune back as much of it as possible into the crown or the ring uh, circles surrounding the base of that shoot. And this prevents the regrowth of water sprouts. The smaller the stump you leave, the fewer water sprouts you should have next year. And pruning back into the crown or the collar of the branch helps the pruning cut to heal. The other type of pruning cut is a heading cut. And in this case, you're pruning into the growth leaving behind part of that shoot. And this would be a one-year-old shoot. A, a heading cut into that would be like that. And when you remove the tip of that shoot, it uh, releases these buds from the growth inhibition and you get a bushy type of regrowth following the following season. We rarely make this type of pruning cut when we're pruning fruit trees. So in this case, I'm going to head it back into the two-year-old section like that. But a more severe type of heading cut would be to be pruning into this section of the limb. And we already have branches that have developed. So when we're, by making a heading cut into this part of the branch, we're not likely to stimulate the growth of new shoots. And so we don't get a profusion to follow. And this type of pruning cut is very useful for making the branches shorter where you have trees growing into each other. A heading cut into the older sections of the branch will make it shorter. And it's also useful in the top part of the tree to bring the height down. It's also important to pay attention to how many flower buds are on the apple tree when you're pruning it to prevent yourself from pruning out too many. 
Flower buds on an apple tree have a characteristic shape that is very different from leaf buds. Uh, flower buds are found at the tips of short shoots and spurs. Spurs are just shoots that grew uh, a few inches or less in one season. Flower buds are fat in contrast to leaf buds which are much smaller and uh, shorter or more pointed. Laterally along the shoots and spurs, uh, apples normally form leaf buds. In rare instances, they'll form flower buds. So pay attention to how many flower buds the tree has. If it has a lot of flower buds in this year, it's okay to prune off um, a number of these shoots that have flower buds. We've reached a point where the tree is nearly finished pruning, especially on this side. There's still a lot of shoots on that side that can be pruned out. If you like to have a lot of flowers on your fruit trees, then this would be a great place to stop pruning it. But if you're pruning it to get the best colored, largest fruit, this tree could still use more pruning.